Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, sorry it's been a while since I posted a video. Um, work had me away and stuff and now I'm getting ready to move. So I got a bunch more mess in here, but I figured might as well start like posting a, a new video after a while of, I'm just gonna do the general maintenance on the, the KA. Um, I've already did the trans and the diff not too long ago. And I used Redline gear oil. Very expensive stuff. So I'm not going to be changing that today. Uh, today I'm probably just going to do the oil and also just flush the radiator. And normally if you want to do a complete flush, you'd probably disconnect everything and rinse it out the block and all that. But I'm just going to literally just drain the, the radiator and top it back up. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to do that in the FSM, you would go to, I believe it's one, yeah, 128. We'll literally show you exactly how to drain your oil and your oil filter and stuff. And then for your radiator, you would go towards 133 which will show you exactly where to loosen to drain it and the coolant level in the recovery box and everything so that's where you want to find out what you're going to do in the FSM so now I'm going to start it off just remove this Yeah, not too long ago, I've already flushed the entire block, but when I first got the car, there was a lot of rusty water, so I don't really want to do that. And I just want the KA to last as long as possible for now, since I'm still kind of daily in it. Not really driving as much until we get, like, the RB ready. I got the gaskets and everything, so that's going to come real soon, is putting that back together and getting it all ready and doing the swap. So, get it going. And one of the cool things about a lot of cars don't have that these do is they actually have a, a bleeder screw right here for air. This is very easy to snap. Uh, it feels like a 10. So you would just carefully put it off and on. And then when you fill this up, obviously you bleed the air out of that instead of having to squeeze the hose to get all the air bubbles out or use like a special radiator fill funnel and stuff like that and all the tricks and I'll probably still turn on the heater and stuff like that to get the bubbles out so let's see I think my bottom is 14 Just figured I might as well do a little, little maintenance, get a video going again, and get back into the, the whole groove of things. Even though I won't be able to do too much because I'm going to get ready to move again. But in the meantime, let's see. So there's that bad boy right there. That's a 14. Guys, uh, sorry. I just checked after I saw the video and I saw that it was really, really bad lighting. So I'm going to show more up close what exactly one's uh, bolts and the butterfly valve and stuff like that that I was talking about. Um, but yeah, if you're directly under, there's the oil pan and the sump pan. And there's the there's the drain for the oil. Uh, I believe mine was a, like a replacement. I think there are other sizes. This one was a 14 though. But yeah, uh, again, sorry for the the bad lighting in this video. I didn't realize till afterwards I was recording that the the footage was bad in a lot of spots. But basically, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And with these three spots, it's all you would need to 
drain the oil and change the filter and the butterfly valve so again that's exactly what it is and this is on the passenger side of the car USDM passenger so let's get her off And then I'll always make sure <laughs> that is open so you don't have a huge mess. And let's get it. Cool thing about these two is they're generally magnetic from the factory. I'll let that drain out. Handy dandy paper towels. I'll wait for that to drown. Not drown. <laughs> Dry out. And then take off the, the oil filter in a minute. Take off the Teflon tape. I believe I put Teflon tape. There's usually supposed to be a washer. Mine didn't come with one. A little rubber seal. But I believe I'll be able to find a replacement. There we go. Got it on there nice. Sounds like the oil stopped draining.
Well, it would have made it better also as I should have took this off. That way there's no pressure. Forgot that number. It sounds like it's stopping on this, so. You get a rag clean up around there. Still dripping a little bit. Let it drain a little bit more. In the meantime, might as well just open up the coolant and let that flush. that one. Let's see if I can get under there. That tab right here. It's a butterfly tab. Let's see if I can get on the side. Right there. And you just loosen that. And also on the driver's side is where you'll see with the stock radiator that is the the butterfly plug valve it is located on the driver side towards the bottom easy to find and this is of course the same righty tighty lefty loosey let all this drain out It out. It's gonna probably make a huge mess. That's okay. Well, that was a lot more messy than I thought. Shop towels and clean that up. <laughs> the wonders of draining coolant. Good thing I got crap loads of towels. I'll just wash all that later. Fluid don't look too good. That's okay. When I go to the RB, we're getting rid of this thing. So and then in the meantime, get off the oil filter, which is usually always, even if you don't crank that thing down, it's always seized up on there. So let's get it going. And of course, also on the passenger side, right underneath the intake, you can see right there is where the little oil filter is, right next to the fuel filter. And of course, it's again righty tighty, lefty loosey to take it off. But that is where it is located on the K, right down up under here. Nice, easy spot to get to.
Oh, surprise. It's not cranked on there. Sometimes this thing is just, even I, I'll like nicely put it on there, add that quarter turn, and yeah, it'll be cranked all down. I do like how easy it is to get to it in the K8 right here though. Not bad. I usually like to use Bosch. Or if I don't like Bosch, I usually like Wix. I had a friend who's very meticulous with his cars and one of his buddies showed him the difference between the brand name and actually using a Wix filter. And the Wix filter actually worked a lot better. So I, I like Wix. I stick with them or Bosch. Those are my filters. And then for oil, I usually like, well, at least for the KA, I'm gonna run the Castrol GTX. 10W30. And while we wait a little bit more, might as well get the filter going. happens. I'll just put a little bit in the filter just so it won't start up on a dry sump and then a little on the lube ring. Should be finishing up. Alright, I'll actually pour it over here just in case. That should be enough. And then just use this a little bit. Can I get that going? Clean up around that area real quick. The rag. Also, right before I pull out the K8, I'll talk about all the cool uh, reliability mods. Or more, I guess you could say, better performing mods. Like the Z32 fuel filter, or that giant Quest alternator, the S14 slave down there. All the cool stuff you can do to make the K better. And it's all off of Nissan. We're upgrading this over a fill tank that always goes. on Get in there. 
And then just that little bit right there. There we go. Now we can clean up under there. And then put the cap back on on both. It's gonna be some cleaning <laughs> I'm gonna have to do. But that's alright. Okay. Now this guy. My favorite, water everywhere. Sorry if this might be a little bit too dark. Hoping it's not. Put this bad boy back on. get in a better position. And this one you don't want to crank down either, it's plastic. It's a good twist like that. Clean up some of this. It's like a lot of refreshing you do to this. Well, when I strip it all down, that's when I'll get majority of it all, all bushings and everything back together. It's as good as it's going to get for right now. All right. Yeah, they don't look good. That's why we're changing it out. Alright. You just gotta tighten down that cap down there. I'll do that so I don't have to get back down there. Alright, what did I do? With the wrench. Nice and snug, not too tight. So we should be done down here. Next, I'm going to take off that bleeder.
my extension on extension game is on point. Now, carefully. Because the screw screw cat breaks so easy and they're already all junky. I like to clean it too before I put it back on there. Get it nice. There. Clean enough. Got all that rust off. Get this little lint off. Put that right there for right now. We will add oil first before I clean this, so that way I can clean this and put the coolant on that side. Bottoms up. Check it. Don't want to overfill it. A little bit below three. I'll check it. Yep, definitely need more. Keep going. It's almost to 1.5. But that might be all I need. I'll give that a minute to sit and check it. Definitely gross. That looks like it's almost money. It might be money. We'll find out. Yep, there's definitely money.
and then I'll give this a good clean in a minute and then we'll put coolant in this thing bring her down fire it up turn on the heater let it run through some cycle and then should be good next thing to do is fill this thing up put this back it's all good so the oil is fine time to fill up the rad back to where it was and make sure no leaks into there No leaks. Nope, no leaks. Oops, I tell you also not went too far. That's alright. I'm gonna turn it on, it's gonna cycle through and it's gonna go down. Alright, so now, get ready to take this out, and we'll turn it on and fill up anything that we need to, and it turns on and it goes down a little bit. Well, I'm back. It's back on the ground. Uh, now we get ready to turn it on. I made sure there's no more leaking underneath, and I cleaned up all the coolant that I can for right now on the, at least on the subframe and everything like that. Because one, we love animals. Two, bad for environment. So I'm gonna get it all ready. Now I'm gonna fire it up, and let's see how much we gotta add. needs to go through get warmed up and then I can put the bleeder and fill it back up 
Now I'm going to put the bleeder screw back on. And now just top off a little more. Just a little bit. There, and then I'll just turn it on one more time, let it run, see if I have any temperature fluctuations and stuff like that, meaning that there's air in the system. But other than that, it's good to go. I just the whole rest of the time is going to be clean up. Pretty much my basic little small maintenance besides having like crazy coolant spill as I did but it happens I mean other than that you just got to clean it up let it get good but basically it the ka is like really really easy to do maintenance on and stuff like that and can take a beating so I like it it'll do good for right now until we get the RB actually built and everything and everything's good and ready to go but yeah guys, um, thanks for watching, stay tuned, there's going to be a lot more coming out. Maybe not as fast, because like I said, I'm in the middle of moving and stuff like that, but yeah, there's going to be a lot more coming this way to this channel with, with this car. And I'm possibly thinking about getting a, a strip shell, this is just hypothetically speaking, and then maybe like really, really go off on the shell and slowly transfer everything from that shell to over there like a bare bone shell I'm talking about. But if I do that, it has to be right hand drive, so I'm gonna want everything converted if I'm gonna do it like bare bone like that. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.